What's going on, guys? It's Mark Russell. Today, we have a very, very interesting blog post, vlog post. Here we go. I'm going to bring a special guest on. It is Kevin, Smart Solutions, Pest Control. What's up, Kevin? Hey, how's it going, Mark? Good to uh, have you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Just got done working out, a little tired, but I want to talk. Let's talk about trees and bugs. Let's talk about it. Let's, Let's talk about it. All right, guys, to catch you guys up real quick, some of you guys who might have hit a keyword on this have searched something to the tune of, can bugs really come across branches onto my house? How high up should I prune a tree for bug clearance? I'm a certified arborist. Kevin, how long have you been in the in the bug business? About 15 years. 15 years here in Atlanta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And so you guys, tell tell us about what you guys hear when your guys are out in the field regarding, um, I don't know, regarding trees and your deal. Well, one, of the, one of the things that our guys do that's a little different than a lot of other companies is we don't just go and, and what we call spray and pray. Um, there's a strategy called integrated pest management, and that's where you look at the harborage of the bugs, you look at what they're eating, um, you look at the conducive conditions, and mm -hmm. one of those conducive conditions is trees and shrubs growing on the house. Um, they can use those things as a way to bypass the barrier that the pest control company puts around the foundation of your house. Because ah, so, you're not spraying on the tips of the leaves or spraying on the roof. Right, right. You can't usually. Um, there's some situations where you could do a spot treatment, but most of the time you're not allowed to spray upwards like that. Sure. Um, but... You can, uh, you know, it's, it's best to just remove the conducive condition rather than to treat it anyway. Okay. Um, so, you know, where we've got trees touching the house, you can have things like carpenter ants. Um, you know, they like, they like rotting wood, wood that's been exposed to fungus and moisture and things like that. And uh, they can use that to hitchhike into the house. I've seen acrobat ants do it as well. Acrobats? Acrobat ants, yes. Tell me about those. What's an acrobat ant? An acrobat ant has a heart-shaped abdomen, and um, they, uh, they're very interesting. They, um, they can get into structures. They're, they can be difficult to control, um, but they, uh, they often nest in trees and gutters and things like that. Okay, so uh, with little trapezes, right? We got to... Yeah. Gotta... <laughs> they're very talented. They're very talented. <laughs> they, I was thinking about opening a circus with the little acro ac acrobat ants. So let's see. So, okay, so you have fire ants, what, you have the big black ants, the carpenter ants. Carpenter ants, yeah, everybody's familiar with those. Those those can be really difficult to get rid of, especially if you've got spray foam insulation, uh, forget about it, because they can nest in that spray foam and there's almost no way to treat it. Really? I mean, you can, well, you would have to go and you would have to make a bunch of holes in the spray foam. Oh, yeah, because, oh, you know, it's funny that you say that because it won't, the the stuff won't go through the spray foam to get to them. Right. So did and you know that in my line of work, and by the way, as a side note, when you said IPM, we have that also. So really? uh, Lori and I, we have our applicator's license for the fungicide stuff, right? We don't do oh, any cool. of that really, but we have the license. And I remember when we're taking the test, the IPM is a big issue because when we got our right. applicator's license, you just don't want to over chemical. But exactly, exactly. The the thing about what you were saying with the spray foam, also there's a similarity when a tree gets some sort of disease in it. Um, not everybody knows this, but a, a tree trunk is like um, a pack of straws, right? Similar in nature, even though you have the, the vascular system going up and down, moving material, like the spray foam, it doesn't go side to side. It won't go through it. Kind of like our body, you put some antibiotics in it, it's going to get everywhere, but not with like, you can't, when there's an infection in a tree, oftentimes it's done. Like if it's on the inside, you can't get to it. That's that makes sense. That makes sense. And you know, carpenter ants, they, uh, they, they'll hollow out galleries and stuff in the wood and they're, they're very smooth looking. It looks almost, it's got like a sandpaper type appearance to it, but you can even, um, when, when, once they get in the house, they usually have a main colony outside of the house and they'll establish satellite colonies. Um, a lot of times the satellite colonies will be in the house. And um, it's you like can a even little hear... Elon Musk's. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, you can even hear the rustling sound of them 
dislocating the wood and, and displacing the wood. So they can actually do a lot of damage. You can hear that. Have you ever heard pine beetles doing the same thing? No, no, See, I haven't. Look at this. See, look at the bug guys and tree guys. Bro, listen, seriously. <laughs> when you have pine beetles in a tree, for sure. I remember Lori and I, had, we had some logs in the back and we had harvested something or whatever, taken down some uh, trees and we brought them back to the yard. We walked up and I mean, you can hear them in there going as they're carving out yeah. the galleries definitely yeah here. yeah a lot of, a lot of good um a lot of good pest control guys will carry a stethoscope and you can you, but you don't even need a stethoscope sometimes but that brings me to uh something else do you guys do like i know you probably do dead tree removal but what about brush piles and stuff because those are hugely problematic uh, i don't even want to talk about brush piles the second we talk <laughs> about oh dude brush piles are really just from a labor standpoint they're the worst like People will yeah. pile up because they pile up everything like all tangled. And then they're like, yes. oh, just go clean it up. And you're like, dude, if you would have stacked it all the night the right way, my bobcat could grab it and haul it out. But they don't. They do it like that. But that's a different subject. Okay, so tell me that's Harbridge. Yes, that's a Harbridge. And that's something that our technicians will look for when we're out at your property is look at Harbridges and make recommendations on how to how to remove them and so forth. Um and not just for bugs. I mean, we're talking copperhead snakes. We're talking, um, you know, rats, mice. And so you guys like that. do that. Y'all catch, do you guys catch snakes? We actually trap snakes. And that's something that most companies won't do. We have a trapping program for snakes. How do you, it's, uh, how do, you do that? It's something that, um, it's a uh, specialized trap that our owner kind of invented, honestly. And um, he uses, uh, he uses certain things for bait. Uh, quail eggs is one of the things he uses. And, um he uh, he traps them and we remove them from the property. But the big thing with snakes is if you've got snakes on your property, a lot of people think, well, if I've got snakes, I don't have rodents because the snakes will eat the rodents. Well, the snakes are only going to eat so many rodents. You know, a rodent's pretty filling for a snake. So sure, he's going to chill out for a while. As well. Right? Yeah, it's 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 like going to a buffet. So um, when you've got a snake problem on your property, you usually need rodent control. Ah, okay. Okay, and then I, d I have another question for North Atlanta. So I'm in Canton, right? Hickory Flat. Okay. 11 years ago, 12 years ago, when we moved into this property, we were we were excavating around the house, kind of getting it ready to, like, we had some, like, water intrusion stuff. And one day, like, as I was moving around, we were about to leave, there was a snake that got in that little ditch in between the house, and the, and it wasn't, like, there wasn't like water there. It was just the trench that I dug mm -hmm. and it was dark. It was a really super dark snake, thick. And like he reeled back, opened his mouth and it was all white. Now that to me tells me that's a copperhead. But here's the weird thing is in Hickory flat. Like, is there, are they really up this high up North? Do you know? Yes. Yes. I, I live in coming and we've got them up North. Wait, did I say copperhead or moccasin? I, said, I meant to say moccasin. I think, yeah, I think you did. Is that um, a moccasin? Cottonmouth. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to look at it to be able to tell you. But, um, you know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of snakes. We've got, you know, maybe five or six or seven venomous snakes distributed throughout Georgia. There's, there's 47 types of snakes total in Georgia, but we only deal with a few venomous snakes. Yeah. Um, so most of, your, most of your snakes aren't going to be as problematic, but still people don't want to see them in the yard, and it's still indicative of a rodent issue. No, I didn't, I didn't like seeing his white mouth and, and like hanging back. Anyway, right, it was really right, weird right. because I've heard that they're not supposed to be this high up north, but maybe they are. I don't know. I, it, I've yeah, only ever seen it's, one. It's tough with Mother Nature. I mean, you, you never know what you're going to find. I mean, they they um, they're constantly finding new invasive species in places too, like the Joro spiders or something that are big now. Um, I'm sure you guys have dealt with those dealing with the trees. Are those the little banana looking things? The banana spiders? Yes, yes. They. Um, Do you like so those? They, they um, they're from Asia, and they uh, <laughs> they actually ended up at the FedEx facility in Brazelton, Georgia. Somehow that was ground zero for it. And they, really. They make these really strong webs and they have like a yellowish kind of tinge to them. I don't know if you've noticed that, but you can see a lot of times between the power lines, you'll see the uh, the webs between the power lines and you can see it's a yellow tinge to it. Very strong webs. Um, it's like walking into a fishing line when you walk into one and they can use those webs to glide on the wind and be carried to other places. And now, I mean, last year, um, 
I was seeing at some properties, I would see 30 or 40 individuals at a property. So they're and a problem. They are. They are. And we found that when people have our mosquito service, they don't see nearly as many of them because we're treating the foliage. So we're treating where they hang out. Ah. And it helps cut down on, on the population. So that's something, or, you know, we can also offer an, a, a one-time treatment for those as well. Maybe a couple of treatments a year for them. But um, if you have a, a big Joro spider problem, mosquito service usually helps with it. Speaking of foliage, I told you I could talk. I'd talk your ear off. <laughs> okay. I'm a very curious guy. Like I am. Cause I like when you're in the trees all the time, you do, you think about the bugs and you think about but the point, what keyed off our conversation is what about the pruning? So like, what's the distance? Yes. How far? And this is a big, to, to some of you guys out there, what, what had keyed off this conversation with Kevin and I is there is a balance from the tree side of things. Kevin, his people, I imagine, Kevin, you guys are always running into saying lift the tree up. And we are always like lift it up off the house, prune it off the house. And we are always saying, hey, hold on. Don't make big cuts on the branches. Right. 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 Well, we're, we're, we're more so get it off of the house. If yeah. I'm not saying house, you're that's... saying to make a bad cut. I'm just right. saying that you want, you want clearance. So there's a balance between clearance and making sure that everybody out there knows, hey, how do you do this right? Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, for, uh, you know, rats and squirrels and things like that, you want to have a couple of feet, at least like three to six feet, three to but, six um, feet for rats. They don't like further than six feet. Yeah. They're, they're more going to climb over than they are going to jump down Okay, so tree over the house is not as much of, of a problem as it is when it's, you know, small limbs touching the house. Okay. So, so wait, stuff, you, you made a delineation. Okay. So if we are level. How far do rats and squirrels not uh, like how far on a squirrel or a rat side to side? How what's the gap? Well, it, it, it depends. I mean, like if we're talking flying squirrels, then oh, that's it's another done. story. It's yeah, all yeah, over. They can, they can glide a long distance. They yeah. can glide up to 80 yards. So, um, you know, but with with rats, I mean, and rats can also climb vertical surfaces. So can mice. Um, house mice can climb any kind of rough so if you have brick or stuff. stucco, it's kind of pointless anyway. It's not pointless to, to trim the trees off, but yeah, I mean, they can climb up those surfaces. Okay. So, so uh, it's, it's a, there's no substitute for sealing up the house. Okay. So seal the house and then like, but I mean, this is good stuff because some people are going to make a decision, Kevin, they're going to be like, like here, as an example, sometimes at tree risk assessment qualified, people will call me and be like, hey, Mark, I really dislike this one tree in the backyard. But it's like one of, like it's maybe the one that's like eight feet closer than 15 others that are all 100 feet tall. And it's like, look, dude, <laughs> you can't mitigate your risk substantially by taking one when you've got 15 others. So this is what I'm asking is like, they could go and like ruin their really nice trees around their house to try to keep rats out, but if they have stucco or brick, it may be um, not really mitigating. Is that worst to your sighting? I mean, they, they, if they'll they'll find a way in. They've got to seal the house up. Okay, so and how that, do you seal a house? We um, we use the best materials. We use metal. Um, we actually have a metal fabrication shop in the back here, and uh, we custom bend metal for for sealing up around the, uh, the around the roof and everything like that. So it's. Um, <laughs> It, so it's you're like, it's not it's just fun. like, it's not like just spraying a bunch of caulk cul everywhere. You're like, no, no, no. They'll chew right through that. They'll chew right through it. Now with, with smoky brown roaches, I know we talked about that before on our um, last conversation with smoky brown roaches, caulking is, is very important, but it's not going to keep something like a rodent out. Cause rodents will eat right through it. Yes. What about hardware cloth? Hardware cloth, it, it, it depends on the uh, it depends on the thickness. Um, they can they can still go, go through that. Um, the but actual we, uh, metal itself? No, I'm, not. I'm not, talking about the little the little one by one metal ones. Sorry, it's kind of a deceptive. I'm talking about the little like the little screen that's like about that big. Like yeah, you I don't wanna, know if that's wanna, the right you, name, but it's made out of metal. Do yeah, wanna, yeah, metal. They 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 have a difficult time with. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry for the nomenclature. Okay. So, um, okay. So you custom build. So like you'll take measurements and y'all will go back. You'll build a, a, like a, 
a plate or something to go up against the house? Yes. Yes. Okay. And does yeah, we, does a typical house have a lot of those? Yeah, I mean most most houses have a gap um, in the uh, roof line that it just is perfect accessibility for squirrels and rats and mice. I mean, okay. That way, it's called a construction gap, and um, it's something that uh, it, it's a huge problem because you get rats and, and mice and squirrels in the attic, and they're they're constantly defecating and urinating. Oh my gosh. They're contaminating the insulation and something else we do is attic remediation where we, we clean and sanitize the attic. Um, so that's, uh, oh, that's so important. If you've had like, can't... if they've had a big infestation, you'll come up there and like kind of clean house. Yes. Yes. Ugh. And a lot of companies claim to do it, but they, um, you know, they'll, they'll drag a dirty hose through the house. That's got, you know, Oh, that's nasty. That's nasty. We actually use a hose sleeve to cover it and, and we we actually sanitize the attic. Ah, okay. Okay, so you sleeve it on the way in, you go do your thing and then it doesn't touch on the way back out, all your Correct. floors and stuff. Hold Correct. on. We keep your house clean. Two seconds, two seconds. So, okay, so sleeve, sleeve, hose comes out, everything's cleaned out. Um. Let's see. Let's get back to this distance thing. We're talking. Sure. Let, the distance. Okay. So rats and mice, we are at, they're going to go up on certain things. So you've got to, you've got to seal it off. And then the second thing is just flying squirrels are going to make it across no matter what. Same with, same with smoky brown roaches. Yeah. They're strong flyers. It's a, That's a done deal. Smoky Browns guys, for everybody who doesn't know the tech talk, because I, had to find out that's the palmetto <laughs> bugs that's the florida euphemism for p palmetto bugs yes hotel industry came up with it so that when people said i've got a roach in my room no no it's just a palmetto bug oh well that makes me feel a lot yeah <laughs> the super nasty when i was a little kid i went to uh, bermuda i didn't tell you this story i went to bermuda and uh with my dad and i was walking down like he was doing something i walked down the driveway or something and i like saw one and i like took a stick and i it was like on a palm leaf or something and i hit it and buddy, it landed right on my shoulder. It was so awesome. Uh, <laughs> they were kind of scary when you're a little kid. Yeah, he was they're scary kid. when you're an adult. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Nobody, no, I haven't met any Roach fans as of yet. So. No, no, there's not a lot. Okay, so, so okay, so the smoky brown roaches can fly down, and but how far for the how far for the squirrels and the rats distance wise? Let's assume they can't climb anymore. Just what's the jump factor on those guys? Sideways. Probably like three to six feet. Three to six feet. So if you've got six feet, you're good for sure. I would think so, yes. Okay, and I, now what about the down factor? They're not going to really jump down so much. They don't uh, like um, that? No, no. They, 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 they would rather go across. Okay. Uh, and it, it's, it's similar with uh, like black rat snakes. They'll, they'll do the same kind of thing because they'll get in an attic to shed their skin. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So snakes also, how far snakes can't probably go across near as well as a squirrel or a mouse. Can they? No, it, it's, it's, it's almost got to be touching, but okay. Um, you know, still nobody wants to come face to face with a snake in their attic. No, no, I don't for sure. Uh, <laughs> I uh, don't either. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then, so then the, the last question I guess is when, um, so is, are we talking three to six feet also? Like if you have six feet clearance above your roof, do you say, hey, that's good for 95% of everything? Six feet? Per, per, it's, it's better than none. It's better than none. Absolutely. And, and that, again, just to clarify, guys, to everybody out there, there's exceptions. Little flying palmetto bugs, there's, it's game off, game over. They can come from 80 feet on the top of a tree and glide down. Oh, toward the light. Yes, the light is a big factor. Now, one thing that really does work that's not a gimmick is the um, exterior yellow bug bulbs. And that's because they lack the um, white wavelength of light that attracts the bugs. So if you change your exterior bulbs, especially around entryways and stuff, to the uh, yellow bug lights that you can get at any big box store or on Amazon, that will help cut down on the amount of insect activity. Really? And then all we have to do yeah. is just adjust the color temperature to our, uh, like, just get used to the feel of having kind of yellow light when we walk outside. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh. And it, it makes a big difference. I've had, uh, and, and it's a suggestion. It's one of those suggestions that we make to customers that a lot of other companies overlook. But we, um, we've noticed the people that do take that suggestion do see results from it. Okay. Well, that's a new one for me. I didn't know that, but I appreciate, I'm going to tell my wife that she will definitely appreciate that. Okay. Okay. So yellow lights. Um, is there any other thing related to trees that you could suggest that would be like, that you could suggest that would be like, Hey, this is what you can do with your trees to mitigate further bug intrusion. Well, if you've got an uprooted tree, um, that's one thing. If you've got an uprooted tree where you've got the root ball and it's, and it's, you know, like this and you've got the root ball sticking up, we've seen fox dens in those, uh, uprooted areas, uh, coyotes, Are- um, all sorts of stuff can, can get in there. So if you've got an uprooted tree, it's a great idea to take it down. Do and, you, um, do people not like foxes? Yeah. Foxes can be problematic that, you know, they can carry rabies and, and you, you don't really want them around. Yeah. That's interesting. We have a lot of uh, peacocks and whatnot, and that would not be awesome. For no, 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 no. And uh, the other thing too, is with, with shrubs, you want them to be trimmed uh, six inches off of the house and six inches up from the ground Oh, and to help with rodents and snakes as well. So I don't know if that's something you guys do, but having those trimmed off the house and up, helps a lot as well with all sorts of pest activity. I mean, everything from snakes to rodents to ants. Okay. All right. Uh, Six inches. Hey, and by the way, my wife and I were talking about this the other day. Um, We are big proponents of using wood chips uh, to promote growth Mm -hmm. of your tree. And just as a side note, it's really good because it holds in the moisture on the tree root system when you put right. three to four inches of mulch down as wide as you can go, typically, uh, the the more the merrier. Like there's always this constant battle between, you know, in North Atlanta, obviously between grass and, um, you know, like the shade of a tree. People sometimes think, oh, let me grow Bermuda grass right up to the trunk. And I'm like, dude, yeah. that doesn't work. They need <laughs> a lot of light. So then, whoa, are you still with me? Uh, did I lose you? No, oh, there you go. Okay, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Good. That was close. Okay, so so anyway, the point is, is lots of mulch, more the merrier, holds in moisture, promotes the growth of the tree. Now, here's the question. Um, we put some up against our house, and I was telling Laura, I was like, hey, this is a really not a good idea to have it stacked. Mm-hmm. Um, so I told her, and this is me not being super bug guy. She's the one who's actually certified on her applicator's license. But I'm going to ask you, how many inches of exposed dirt do we want to prevent intrusion with termites, to mitigate, slow it down? Uh, 12, 12 inches is good. Um, we would prefer, if it's close to the house, we would prefer uh, river rock, lava rock, oh. rubber mulch. But um, if you've got you know any, any type of ground cover, you want to have mm. at least 12 inches away from the foundation. Okay. And another reason for that, is because when we apply the uh, the products that we apply, you know, we want to get it where the bugs are. And one of the one of the unique things that we do at this company that they don't do at a lot of companies is we'll actually rake that ground cover back from the foundation. Sure. We'll take the time to rake it back and, um, you know, remove it so we can apply the product and then we'll put it back so that the product is there where the bugs oh, are. Oh, up lot underneath. Of- so you'll rake back yeah, some rocks, yeah. spray it down, and then put the rocks back. Yes, yes. And a lot a lot of these companies are just going and spraying on top of the pine straw and that product is never really getting to down the near area the termites. Bugs near right, the bugs. Right. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um okay, so just one last thing and we're skipping all over, but I want to tell you so your guys can watch. Um when you have a pruning situation to achieve that six feet, and you have a branch come a big leader. There's like multiple places. You and I talked about this Mm -hmm. really quick. You know, you'll have like offshoots, right? From this branch. And at the very end, you got these little down drops, right? Mm -hmm. So the point being and why we guys to the audience out there, why we even thought about doing this podcast is this issue that Kevin's guys are facing all the time. And that my guys face all the time as a tree company is kind of trying to navigate at the end of the day. When you're trying to achieve that six foot uh, minimum, 
is not to come back to the elbow or to the to the main shoulder of the branch, sure. but rather like go up to the next wherever there's an upward and then come out here and there are a couple drop downs. Where you want to prune is on those drop downs. That'll get you the six foot, but you won't be um you want the, so the, the issue guys is every cut you make is going to have exposed wood. And not everybody knows this, but that exposed wood on the inside does not heal. It's not alive. The only live part is the skin, the bark of the tree. So the second that you make like an exposed cut, that's why it does like kind of a callus and grows over. Interesting. And yeah. So so when when your guys like are like looking, it's always better to have a like a smaller, you know, a smaller cut. The smaller, the better. Lots of smaller cuts on pruning is more effort, but it is it's it's less exposure of that material. Because here's the problem: if you go make one single cut, rig that piece, fly it out of there, and then you're done. It's one cut. But then the problem is you've got this huge face, and decay can get in, and then decay rots the trunk and destabilizes the whole top of the tree. Versus that's, lots that's, of little small cuts that achieve that achieve that six foot, and then within a season those small cuts heal, and you don't have that big problem with the trunk. Like if you're gonna have any amount of decay going in, I'd a whole lot rather it be on a piece of wood this big, right? Yeah, like, and you know the smaller branches touching the house are really what we're more worried about anyway, rather than large branches being overhanging the house. So yeah, I mean that that's that works well with us. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, how do, let me ask you this, Kevin. Uh, how do people, what's, what's your website? It's uh rat control Atlanta.com. We've got a couple of them, but rat control Atlanta.com is the main one. Our phone number is uh six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, four, zero, one, six. Say, uh, we do say, say it one more time. Uh, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, four, zero, one, six. And rat control Atlanta.com. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, that's it. If you need some rat control or some coyote control, give them a call. Kevin, thank you for coming on, man. This has been a fun hey, my conversation. Pleasure. Great, great. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. All right, you guys, if y'all need any thoughts on your trees, hit us up. You can hit us on this YouTube channel. You can give us a call at 1-800-TREE-EXPERT. We'd be happy to help. Thanks again, Kevin. You guys, take it easy. All right, take it easy, Mark. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.